All righty, Saints fans. We have our uh, our third former player coming on the uh, coming on the air with us tonight, and uh, one of the more unique names in the AFL. We've got Farron Ray. How are you, mate? Very good, boys. Thanks for having me. Great no to worries. be here. Thank you for coming on. Um, now, a very celebrated career across three clubs. Um, of course, came to St Kilda in a uh, very su- successful period mm. for the club, um, reaching two grand finals. Um, playing in, I, I guess you would have played in three consecutive final series after, well, when you were with okay. the Dogs, so I guess you would have played in one there too. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about the uh, the transition from Bulldogs to St Kilda and, and really what, what made the difference, um, especially leading in that, that, up to that 2009 season. What, what was the biggest difference you noticed from coming across from the Dogs mm-hmm. to the Saints? Yeah, so it was a. It turned out to be obviously a really, really good move by um, by me. Good timing as well. I I had a. I obviously got drafted to the to the Bulldogs as a seventeen year old and had a good had a good five years there. I, I probably didn't um, establish myself as much as I'd like. There was it was a pretty competitive team, and and I sort of tend to forget. But at the Bulldogs, we we did play some really good footy. Like we were playing mm. finals two thousand six. 2000 and um, 2008, so played a really attacking, running, offensive style of game, um, but still pressured um, and that. And then at the end of 2008, I sort of made the made the decision of um, all right. Well, I, I think I might need a bit of a bit of a fresh start. And and then I remember sitting down with Leon Cameron at the time, the, the GWS <laughs> coach. He was my mid, midfield coach at the time, and he um, we sort of identified St Kilda as a, as a good. There might be an opportunity there. There was a link there with Matthew Drain as well, who was yeah. at the Bulldogs, and then he went over to the Saints. And then, um, yeah, I, I got there. They needed a running type player, and they were playing finals, and it just worked really well. They had a good culture there. Um, not not that the Bulldogs didn't, but um, yeah, it was at the time it was it was a tough decision because I had a lot of best mates at the Bulldogs, but I never hesitated on doing the right thing by my career. So yeah. That's right. So was Leon Cameron? Was he at the Bulldogs? Was he? He was. At, he was at the Bulldogs. Yep. So he was my midfield coach. So Chris Bond was my midfield coach early days. Then he yeah. he left and went to Fremantle. And Leon Cameron was my midfield coach in two thousand and eight. Definitely two. Yeah, two thousand eight. And I remember going out for coffee with him the end of 08 and said, "Look, I reckon he thought that I needed a fresh start." And 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 then we had a list of the teams, and uh, we both decided that St Kilda was a good fit. So, um, and then it ended up there after a, a long, what seemed a long time in, in Bali for trade week. <laughs> um, and back then trade week was only a week. So the deal hadn't been done by Thursday night. So I remember sending a pretty forceful text to my manager and maybe, maybe Leon as well. But anyway, it ended up getting done the next day. So yeah. trade week's pretty tricky time. So that, I guess that was a good weekend in Bali then. It was a good. Uh, it. it was footy trip. It was Western Bulldogs footy trip. So oh, we, yeah. um, oh, I remember speaking yeah. to Ross Lyon um, eight o'clock one morning, and um, yeah, I'd, I'd obviously been out that night. And I hadn't slept, <laughs> and I was, so, I was oh, waiting there on the step at the front of my hotel, and Ross Lyon called me. Um, oh jeez! Yeah. So how did how did you break it to the the Bulldogs fellas? Did you tell them on the trip, or did they just did they just see in the uh, on the Herald Sun website or something like that. No, I um, I think they probably suspected it, but this is where I there was there was sort of minimal. I still played some good footy and and a lot of footy under the Bulldogs, but I just think I, I'm not sure if I clicked with with Rocket, the coach at the time, and mm. um, you know there was plenty of running type players there as well. So no, none of the boys, none of the boys resented me. They they all sort of I think. I think when it happened, um, we were on footy trips, so it was like you know I could spend it with with those boys then. But um, I remember co- getting a, then a call from the Saints boys. I remember Andrew McQualter, which I knew. Um, he I played footy with him. He called me and then put me on the phone to to Rui and Joey and and Lenny and all the boys. So that that was a really nice moment as well. Oh, good. Yeah. How, how was it coming up against the dogs the first time? Like you say, you left on good terms. So I guess it wasn't was it that difficult to come up against them. Well, it was, and, and funnily enough, two thousand and nine, I played them four times. Yeah. So I played them one <laughs> in the preseason. <laughs> I played them two in season, and then we played them in the prelim, and then obviously yeah. the back-to-back prelims in two thousand and ten. So mm. 
I actually had two good games in 2009 in the season, but the prelim where they nearly got us, you boys would remember that. They nearly they jumped yeah. us early and that they nearly beat us. That was one of the hardest games I've played in. Yeah, right. Yeah. It was just funny. It, it Throughout the year, it flowed pretty well. And I was like, all right, well, I played fairly well against them. But 2009 prelim, they came after us hard. Yeah. What would you say was the hardest um, thing to overcome in that prelim? Was it their physicality? Was it their ball use? What what was it their defensive structures? What was the main thing going into half time where we started to get a bit of a kick on? Um, what what do you remember the main message there and how you kind of fixed that and turned it on on its head? The main thing that we struggled with was their ball use. The Bulldogs ball use was elite back in the day. I mean, I mean it, even when I was there, there was a big focus on that. But I, I think what what probably doesn't is sort of um, undervalued a bit was was pressure that the Bulldogs could apply as well. Their fronts will come forward mm. pressure that Rocket used to implement. So I remember them coming after us with their their ball use and um, even I remember Mitch Hahn started on the wing on on me and then he sort of flipped forward. I remember ending up, ending up in the goal square and him taking a mark on me. So they were very good at flipping half forward wing and and, and doing little flips like that. So. Uh, but I'm at half time. I think we had pretty good confidence in our game plan. So we knew that the Bulldogs were, they'd sort of come out really well, but we just sort of stuck to our, our guns. And I think, I think it was the, the 09 one when Brian, like, did he deck Rui? I think it was the 2009 or the 2010. I can't, I get mixed up with those two, but that sort of changed the momentum as well. Yeah. That was directly after half time. So, yeah. so was there a bit of resentment? Uh, towards you leaving, coming to the Saints by the 2010 prelim? Uh, was there a bit, a bit of resentment from the, the Bulldog uh, boys? I was, or? I was just being silly because, you know, you'd left left the doggies, came up against them twice in the prelim, yeah. and then I imagine yeah. that, you know, the, enough uh, enough of the niceties, Faz. Like, you, you've done us twice here. <laughs> <laughs> well, sort of. I, well, actually, I remember then at the end of... 2009, so after we've lost the 09 grand final, Adam Cooney's wedding was in Adelaide. Yeah. And so we just lost the granny, but we just beaten the Bulldogs in the prelim. And um, I remember Dan- Daniel Jan Syracuse is a bit of a stirrer. So he's the most annoying guy, really good mate of mine now. He um, he was the first one. As soon as I saw the boys, he's, he sort of gave me stick about losing the granny. And um, I don't know if you remember, but he missed a really important left foot shot yeah. on goal in the to the prelims, so I went back at him with that, and he didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! Yeah, that. good, good. I'm good glad stuff. he did that because he cost us Cozzy as well. Um, now uh, we're just <laughs> we're, we're we're just having a look at a, a few stats here from your uh, St Kilda days, and we just want to see if you can remember just how good you were in a few games. Um, no, I don't think plenty better than me. Uh, that's for sure. Be interesting. <laughs> this is going to be great. So we we want to know: Do you know your best stats? Uh, well, I, I, most players would be lying. If the, by best stats, yeah, do you yeah, mean the most yes. amount of possessions? So he should get this, is what yeah. he's saying. <laughs> yeah. So, are you talking the most amount of stats in a game? 39. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's nailed it. He's nailed it. He's all like, how about most amount Any of marks? Players? Most marks? Well, uh, most amount of marks. Um, I'm going to say 13. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> same game, too, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Do you remember yeah, the game? Same game. How vain of me! <laughs> <laughs> Highlights real, just in the background. Yeah, that was that was yep. part of the 2009 season. Yeah. Do you remember the game? The uh, d- it was it was against Adelaide. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well done. Yep. We'll, round, we'll give you that. It could have been round. Could have been round 15. Oh, oh you're awfully geez. close. Oh. Awfully close. What no. was it? Was it round? I think it, was, it would have been mid. Yeah, it would have been just round past 16. Half. Round, round 16. 16. There you go. 16. Just missed out. No, well done. Well done. Um, Do you want to know most bounces? That most one, most that bounces. That one, like that's God. an obscure one that I found out. Most bounces in a game. I was impressed with this one. That's a good one. Most bounces. It would have definitely been in the Bulldog days yeah. because after 2008, eight nine bouncing with all the pressing, all yeah. the bouncing went out of the game. So... Uh, I'm going to say at he the Bulldogs, I used to have a few bounces, maybe 11. It's 11. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect scores. Well done, Faz. That's Excellent Google, work. I, I love that. Did Marshy send you the answers? <laughs> I Google myself all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Incredible. No, I love that. Love that. Um, 
We're going to talk about as well a couple of rounds before that famous mm. Adelaide game where you absolutely dominated. Um, round 14 yeah. against Geelong. Um, one of the, if not the best home and away game in history. I, I doubt you'll find one better. Now, what set that game apart from any other game of football that you've played? Probably just the, the lead up. And there was two clear sides that were, uh, you know, above the others pretty much for that year. And rarely do you get two undefeated sides that play each other fairly late in the season in terms of round 14. So, um, and then, you know, we were just playing really good footy. Like no one could get through our press and our pressure. And, you know, Ross Lyon was just amazing coach at implementing that. And then obviously the players did a damn good job at that. But um, I remember the crowd was, was, was very loud. I've, I've seen that game replayed quite a few times, even recently in yeah, this COVID, yeah, there's been some, good, been some good replays, but, um, I remember just the noise of, of the stadium. There was, I know that it was a, um, a record attendance of the crowd, but that's the main thing. You, you couldn't hear that much on the field. It was so loud. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. And uh, the recovery after that game, there was a lot of big hits during that game. There was a lot of fierce tackling. Um, was that probably was that one of the harder games to recover from and get back up the next week and win? Jeez, it was a lot. A long time ago now. I mean, uh, it, absolutely, yeah. Uh, Geelong were a tough team when, when um, you know, when we played them in the 09 Grand Final. That that was obviously one of the toughest games that we played. But um, yeah, they and they had some big bodies too. I mean, they they'd had some success a couple of years before that. So um, yeah, and, and absolute champion. So it was just amazing to see two amazing sides with just brilliant players going at it. Yeah. So. Fantastic. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit about life after football. Um, we've seen a lot of players recently um, struggling with the transition and getting back into the, the almost the real world. You know, um, the the bubble sort of pops after uh, after footy's finished. Um, how did you handle that, and and what have you done since? Yeah, so I've I've had a bit going on. It's a t- it's a tough question to answer. That it, it's. When you a lot of players get drafted straight out of school, 17, 18, they go straight into a, a footy club. Footy clubs are a very good environment because it's there's such a good support network and um, it's really about performing on the weekends. Um, as as a player, that's what you get paid to do. That's what the fans love. That's what the members. That's that's what football clubs are all about. Where we're aiming for something each week and trying to achieve something each sort of week. There's not a whole there's not many jobs out there like that, but then you get to the age of 30, which is nor- for no- for a lot of normal jobs, you're going into your prime um, and then you get told you can't do the, the thing mm. that you love. So it's a bit of a, I don't know, it's a bit frustrating at times and a bit of a cheap shot to the old football stereotype of, um, oh, yeah, like he's battling post footy. But it's, um, you know, when you get to the age of 30, you should be coming into your prime. But really, we've got to, when you when you finish up a footy career, you've got to get into coaching. And coaching doesn't come naturally to a lot of guys. So that's where it's a unique um, unique job compared to most others. Um, but it's, it's a fine line between football clubs providing you a supportive network. There's also managers and, and coaches and all that providing you um, a really supportive environment, but as a player, you've also got to do some stuff yourself so you're ready mm-hmm. to uh, attack the real world. So, yeah, it sort of frustrates me at times when when players haven't used those 13 to 15 years of, all right, well, uh, you know, I need to be preparing for life after footy. So you do need to be focusing on something. But, it, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a long spiel by me, but it's – it's um it's a unique job in that sense, but you've, you've just got to make sure it's a fine line for football clubs to support you, but they can't support you too much because yeah, yeah. you've got to sort of walk on your own two feet. Yeah, um, yeah. that's a very good point. Yeah. So and they've recently been talking about lifting the drafting age. Would you agree with that? Would you say that's a good idea? Yeah, absolutely. I, I bumped, I've got a player manager that lives in my building here and I, I bumped into him and player managers – don't agree with that straight away. But he, <laughs> he said, oh, you want to lift the draft because they want to get their hands on it. But he had some good points about 
what we might end up if they do lift the draft age, I think they should, yes. It gives you time to focus on uh, life after footy, more study. You can be one, two years into a degree and then you get drafted. But the other thing is the player manager guy that I know, he had a good point. You might lose those um, potentially good players in terms of Buddy Franklin's, Dusty Mar- Dustin Martins. They might not even come back to footy after two years of after school and they might go to another sport. So, yeah, it's – I personally, I'd like to lift the draft age. It was – I, I got drafted at 17. I was no way prepared for playing in the AFL. So, mm. um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy with them lifting the draft age. Well said. Um, now, we understand that you're running a bit of a business with your partner um, based on – yep. Yeah, cauliflower products. Tell us a bit about that. Sell yourself. Yeah, I think I need. I don't by the sounds, but I'm not sure if you know too much about it. But a lot of people. Uh, so Bianca and I, my my fiance, we've launched a food business. So in that, we've launched a food product about a year and a half ago. Um, we've launched a cracker and a dip range, um, and and the hero product that it's made out of is is cauliflower. So, but the back end of my career, my last year at North Melbourne, we started doing some R and D on some cauliflower based products. We identified a, a gap in the market, a, a bit of a, a sort of a, a niche sort of product we could come up with. And we worked on a couple of products back then, but they, they, they weren't commercially viable, meaning they didn't stack up the numbers and, and trying to get them on a shelf was too hard. So um, since then, we've launched two crackers. We've launched five dips, three to five dips, um, and we've got them in gourmet supermarkets, um, health food stores. Um, yeah, so we're in, we're in Melbourne, obviously. We're in Sydney. We're in, um, we're in Adelaide. We're, we're in WA. Only a couple of stores in those states. Uh, Melbourne, Sydney, we're in, we're in quite a few. And then we're in, in Tassie as well. So we're in a whole bunch of stores. I've got them here. Oh, hey. Hey. He's got them ready. There hey, we are, ready. prepared. Wait, I'm prepared. <laughs> right, when you've got your own business, you need to... You need to give it a plug. So that's that's the crackers. Beautiful, absolutely. So plain. That's our original flavor. This is our seeded, oh. and these are these are wafers made from obviously fresh cauliflower. And then I've got one of our dips here. These are our dips here. Oh, so that's awesome. our sleeve. That's our sleeve. The tub goes in there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And um, <laughs> that's a that's a basil um, pesto, but it's it's oh, it's base yeah. is, is fresh cauliflower, and this is. We've we changed the recipe uh, recently. Well, we've improved the recipe, and um, this is vegan now. And uh, yeah, this is a belter. Oh, so. I, t- I tell you what, I'm an absolute slut for, <laughs> for basil. So you like the cauliflower, Marshy? Oh, I'm onto it. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Because, um, like you said, it went off the shelf. Was it in Safeway and that for a little while? Uh, n- not in no, not in Safeway. So we're in um, gourmet sort of higher end stores like Leaf and Elwood. We're in Seclunas in Mentone, um, Toscano stores, yeah. um, Whole Food Merchants, Four Cousins in Parkdale. I'm not sure where you guys live. I, but, I did. How about um, Leo's in Camberwell? Uh, I've got to get onto Leo's. Yeah, I contacted them a while ago, but they're they're um, yeah. It's the the tough thing is following up with stores and getting yeah. onto store managers and buyers. They've got that many products, so it's a bit of a slow burn at times with with stores like like Leo's or things like that. So yeah. I need to follow up with a couple of them. But uh, yeah, oh, oh beautiful, yeah, very nice. I've, <laughs> well, got, I've got a big uh, dinner party on this weekend, so uh, <laughs> we're fitting twenty people in within the COVID restrictions, and uh, that'll be what I'm bringing to the party. So I'll bring the dinner, bring well. the crackers. Spread the curiously, love. curiously, Collie. It's called Curiously Collie Boys and uh, Crackers and Dip, mate. There's your, oh, there's your platter. Mate. Love it. I absolutely, absolutely love it. Oh, I'm very curious. All righty. Now, Jakey's going <laughs> to hit you with some uh, quick Clever. fire questions here. Yep. So, uh, and, and a bit of fan mail as well. Oh, yeah. Quick fire questions. Quick, quick fire right. questions. You got them ready? Yep. Best player. Hand on the buzzer. So, what was that? Best player, best teammate. Best, pl- best player. Okay. Um,. Look, I'd I'd have to put, I'd have to put. I might say one from each club. I only had a year yep. at North Melbourne, Good idea. so, but I'll um I'll say Rewalt, I'll say Brad Johnson, mm-hmm. yeah, and I'll say Boomer Harvey. Yeah, <laughs> three, three absolute, absolute champions. champions. Yep. Yeah. Toughest player. Well, I I saw this come through. Marsh obviously sent these before, yep. and I'd have to say Brent Harvey. So when I was at the Bulldogs, I tagged Boomer Harvey. I've told him this story about three times. 
<laughs> and he got the three votes every time. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good. <laughs> he was impossible to play on. Yeah, I, I was tagging him and I couldn't get anywhere near him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he lives he lives next door to my parents and I saw him in the backyard the other day mowing the lawn. He still looks like he can play. He probably like, he, still he, looks, he still does. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he does, yeah. yeah. Um funny funniest player? Funniest ball. Well, there's some guys that might be a bit flat with me here because I won't, you know, <laughs> someone like a someone like a Milne. Milne would be flat if I didn't say him. I'll give him a special mention. Um, I, Nicky Dow's a great mate of mine. I, I find him pretty funny. I shouldn't say him because he would never um, give me a plug. But um, <laughs> I say him. But the bulldog, the bulldog days. I'll, I'll say um, Adam Cooney and Bob Murphy. Okay, very nice. funny. And can you get Actually, can you get onto Nick Dow and? Uh, Tell him that we tried to send him a message through his manager, but it just got politely, politely declined. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got the return to sender yeah. action. <laughs> Typical Del Sano. I'll tell him. I'll try and tell him. But... <laughs> and um, lucky last, best win. Best okay. win. Oh, look, I'd have to say, I'd have to say a couple of those prelims. I mean, we played what we spoke about before, Bulldogs. 09 and 10, um, just getting into a grand final. Not the fact that it was the old side, but getting into a grand final. When when Rui toe poked that ball through in 2009, I mean, what a that it was an amazing was, year yes. up until then. And then the fact, if we had a one, it would just would have topped it off. But it was it was still an amazing year. Perfect. All right, so we'll we'll go through maybe a couple of fan mail questions, and yeah. then uh, we've got a really interesting one that I don't think you're prepared for. So, no, oh, no, I'm yeah. worried. <laughs> Let's go for some of these from uh, Gaudy. You might Gaudy. <laughs> Ask him where to diamond from Gaudy. Where to diamond? So. <laughs> I know exactly what he's talking about. So the the movie Blood Diamond, oh, Leonardo yeah, DiCaprio, DiCaprio yeah. we, it's our favourite movie. We used to live together here in Melbourne. So we watched it probably 20 times, 30 times. And um, Gandhi and me, well, him more so would always try and impersonate the um, the actor. I, I don't know what his name is. You know, the, the is he Sudanese or yeah, yeah. Um, Funny accent. Gorny would always try and impersonate him, but he'd never get it. So that's what that is. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, this one's from uh, Peter. I think you might know Peter Vamavakitis, possibly. Peter Vamavakitis. I coached him at Wesley, yeah. Yeah. He said, tell Faz, <laughs> I, love fella, his, man. Tell Faz I love his collie chips and that melon has a really big head. <laughs> well, firstly, they're not chips. They're, they're crackers. Yeah, come they're crackers. Come on, Pete. Get it right. Peter. Um, Get it right, and Melon. Melon's one of our players. He he's his nickname's Melon because of obvious reasons. He's got a huge head. But Pete's <laughs> he was the heart and soul. He was the heart and soul of the team last year, and the poor bloke did his knee in round round two. Oh, and he, you've hmm. just never met anyone that loves their football as much as Pete. So it was actually quite shattering to see him go down. But I saw him literally the uh, the other day when I was visiting one of my stores. But he's a he's a ripper, Pete. Oh, that's nice. Okay, maybe a, maybe a genuine fan one now. Genuine so we don't annoy one. them. Oh, this one's not. This one's interesting. Which club do you support the most out of the three that you've played for? Oh, it definitely the Saints. I'm a Saints. I'm a Saints man. Definitely. Um, as the years, I always thought the Bulldogs hated me when I left. So I'm not, <laughs> I, I just, uh, I'm definitely a Saints man. But I, I do have a when they won the flag in 2016, the Bulldogs. I, I ended up at the staff party and I. I was around all my ex-teammates and everyone was really welcoming. So that was sort of a, a, the first time I'd been back there. So definitely a Saints man, but a, a, a sort of a little bit of a soft spot for the Bulldogs. Yeah, yeah fair. Well right. said. So, now, speaking, speaking of the Bulldogs, um, we're, we're, we're starting a bit of a new segment with our ex-players, just going, uh, what's the story? Um, now, you might have seen this image come back up rec- in recent times on social media. <laughs> um, it's the 2008... Bulldogs, best and fairest. How did I, how did I know that this was coming? Yeah. You had to come um, up. Faz, what's the story? <laughs> well, it's it's. I'm not sure if you know the story, but there actually is a bit of a good story to it. So that Ooh, was... all right, juicy. That was um, uh, obviously when Coons had won the Brownlow, 2008, and that was, as we know, the Brownlow's on a Monday. So that was... We had our mad Monday that day. And... <laughs> 
at the at the Spotswood R. I think it was a Spotswood RSL, and Coons had to take off at like three or four o'clock, whatever, probably early to to, to get ready for Brownlow. And we uh, fast forward to when the Brownlow's on, we were sort of half watching and drinking as you do on a Mad Monday. And um, the longer it went on, the more votes Coons got. And and I got drafted with Coons, so he's a great mate of mine. And um, it gets down to the last few minutes and we're like, hang on, Coons might win this. And then sure enough, he wins it. We all go absolutely nuts. And all I remember is we are, and we are all dressed up in our dress up costume. So I think I was dressed as maybe a cowboy. There was, there was basketball players. I think there was a Phoenix Suns top and um, all sorts of stuff. Everyone's in their costume. All I remember when Coons won it, we bolted out onto Williamstown Road, running towards the casino. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, trying to get, a, trying to get a taxi, and then we must have ducked home because we're all in normal clothes there. So I think we went home to Sean Higgins' place, was around the corner, and then um, we got to the cast, and we'd had a big day. So the boys had to sort of behave a bit, Compose and um, we'd had a few. <laughs> We, yeah, we'd had a few beers, and then that was that photo was taken backstage in um, after he'd won it in the private room that Coons had, and that that photo, although it had a few beers, I think it's a bad. I'm just going to say it's a bad angle, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's a bloody good story. Now, speaking of costumes and getting yeah, changed, um, uh, again, <laughs> is that what we are? <laughs> that's a geisha. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, my that was another mad mo- no actually that was that's just what I wear to go down to Coles. <laughs> no, was- buy some crackers. That's- <laughs> to buy- yeah, so you don't get caught out buying your own crackers, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, that was obviously another mad Monday, and I was out of ideas. And my um, uh, my fiance Bianca, who Marsh knows, you went to school with Bianca. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yes. So. Um, Bianca, as Marsh might know, is very creative. She's come up with a cauliflower-based cracker and dip range, so she's very, very creative. Yeah, and she, 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 she said, "Why don't you go as a geisha?" And I'm like, "I don't even know what a geisha was." But then she showed <laughs> me some photos, and um, I literally, I, I went and got the costume, and then all the paint. I did the. It was at Port Melbourne Bowls Club, oh. and I rocked up about five minutes too because you can't be late to Mad Monday. And I remember going into the bathroom rubbing all the white paint over me and I got best dressed for the day. So Well done. Oh, amazing. I've got to say, yeah. it's good effort there. Yeah. We'll just put it up for the fans to see again. Just look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's unreal. Uh, uh, well, yeah, Baron, that was amazing. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. That was honestly really, really enjoyable. Um, we got to find out a bit more about that uh, famous photo and I'm sure we'll be uploading that to social media so everyone can hear. <laughs> um but uh, it's, it's good to see you're doing so well. Um, cool. We're definitely going to get down to our uh, local fresh produce stores and uh, grab some crackers. Um, so thank you for coming on. Yep. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, no worries, boys. Had a, uh, had a great time. And, um, yeah, thanks for having me. No Go worries. Saints. No worries. Go Saints. Or you, before, before we go, before we go, sorry, oh, Fats, before we go... Um, didn't uh, one of our AFLW captains send in a question? Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh, here we go. No, okay, it's not, it's not a. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Hang on, hang on. Let me guess. Let me let me guess. No. Is it Rhiannon and what? No, no, no. no. Okay. Question is: Is it true you played AFL for thirteen years? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So, apparent. Well, I'll quick story. Apparently, so I coached at the AFLW obviously this year, and apparently. I talked about my 13 years. But when I make a point, I always reference to my playing days. Like, oh, you know, when I played, I found this work for me. And apparently I used it. Well, you know, back in my 13 years, apparently I used that. Bit, <laughs> so they give, me a bit of, they give me a bit of stick about it, the girls. Oh, that's Beautiful. good. That, that, that was from Sheerlaw. Oh, is that from Sheerlaw? Yeah. Uh, and, and one last thing. I'm sorry, Faz. I know, you, I know you're a busy right. man, but I just want to give you some feedback because um, – I'm, really, I'm really not. But anyway. <laughs> Um, so obviously I was doing the, uh, the meals prep, uh, with the angels on a Tuesday night and, um, all the, the ladies that went in there with the rotation, especially Mary, but, um, all of them were, um, yeah, unequivocal in that 
they reckon you're the nicest player to have come through the the halls at Moorabbin, um, that they've had the pleasure of, uh, you know, helping out. So that says a fair bit about you, Faz. Well, that thank you very much. That means a lot. But it, it, it you know, when when people make obviously the wonderful ladies and the angels and all that, they make they make uh, the lunch and that for us. All the least you can do is say thank you. So. Yeah, we can all obviously be very um, just worrying about ourselves. You rock up and take your food, and mm. uh, you know, one little comment. Thank you very much. Hope you're well. And um, yeah, yeah, it's not that hard. It's is little it? things in life. No, nice one. Yeah. You're an absolute champion, Farron. Uh, we we really appreciate your time. So for for the second time, we, uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we I'm done. I'm we done. bid you adieu. Thank um, you guys. Yeah, we'd be keen to hear uh, back for you later, uh, back from you later in the season, um, just about how the Saints are travelling, how the AFLW is uh, yeah. is travelling, and um, yeah, we, we hope you enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Yeah, happy to, happy to, boys. So um, I'll speak to you soon. Good oh, thanks, Faze. Right. You're a legend. Cheers. Have a good one, mate. Get oh, the crackers. Another plug. Another plug. That's the thumbnail. That's the <laughs> thumbnail right there. I'll screenshot that. Hey, boys. Good Cheers, on mate. you, mate. Cheers.